All right, so this week's lecture is on the properties of soils as well as a statistical review. Um, so some of the soil properties that we would have measured at O'Hill had COVID not kept us from doing so is that we would have measured soil moisture, soil temperature, the depth of the overizon or the organic layer, as well as the slope angle. And our goal is that we want to combine the data from uh, the properties of the soils with the tree uh, data that we collected um, to better understand the species distribution along the O'Hill transect that we sampled. All right, so how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to use statistical methods. And why do we want to use statistics? Um, well, here's three good reasons. We want to quantitatively describe and summarize the characteristics of the data sets. We want to draw conclusions about the population from just taking a sample, because obviously we can't sample everything at um, O'Hill, so we had to just go down, take samples along one transect. And then third, we want to assess the differences and, and the relationships between different data sets, such as the uh, soil data and the tree data. And all three of these aren't um, mutually exclusive. They're all part of, um, you know, why we want to do, why we want to use some statistics. And so you're already probably familiar with um, descriptive statistics. These are going to be things like the mean, median, and mode, or um, the maximum and minimum. These are uh, what are called descriptive statistics. And when we do statistical analyses, um, we, we tend to just do different statistical, use different statistical models. Um, so we're going to talk about two today. We're going to be talking about correlations and regressions. A correlation, it measures the strength of a linear relationship. And what I mean by linear is that it's um, uh, something that can be modeled with a straight line. Uh, and we're also going to be using regressions. Um, regression models are used to predict the relationship between uh, two variables. So can x predict y? Um, correlations, like I mentioned, these measure the strength of a, of a linear relationship, of a, of a relationship that can be described with, this, with a straight line. And the correlation coefficient, R, it ranges from a value of uh, negative one to a value of positive one. A value at either of those extremes represents a perfect correlation. Um, and a value in the middle, say zero, is um, perfectly anti-correlated. Generally, the larger the uh, correlation coefficient value is, then the stronger the relationship. These are just uh, three examples of uh, correlations. So on the left here, we have a positive correlation. On the, in the middle, we have a negative correlation. And on the right, we have uh, no correlation between the X and the Y values. Um, but one um, thing that you really need to keep in mind when, when working on correlations is that a correlation doesn't um, mean, it doesn't always mean causation. Like in this example, um, here we have on the X axis, the fresh lemons imported to the US from Mexico. And on the y-axis, we have the total US highway fatality rate. Um, so obviously, the fresh lemons um, imported to the US from Mexico don't have anything to do with the US highway fatality. But these, um, these variables are highly correlated. A regression, like I mentioned already, it's used to model the relationship between two variables. And today we're going to be using uh, linear regression. And that's uh, modeling a straight line. So that's the y equals mx plus b. We're modeling a straight line, uh, a line of best fit through the data points. 
Um, and so you're probably familiar with the um, equation for a line, but it's y equals mx plus b, m is the slope, and b is the y-intercept. Another statistic that we're interested in with regards to regression is the r-squared value. And this r-squared value tells you how well your independent variables um, predict your dependent variables. An r-squared value ranges from zero to one, with zero being um, you know, no fit and one being a, a perfect fit. And so in this example, we have uh, an equation for a line and we also have an r-squared value. So in this example, what is the independent variable? The independent variable is always gonna be on the x-axis. And here, um, that's gonna be water temperature. That would make gross primary production the dependent variable. So we're trying to model gross primary production given water temperature. What is the slope? Well, if we look at the equation for a line, we can see that the uh, slope is 0 0.4473. And it's a positive value, which makes sense. So it's a positive slope. Um, and what that means is as water temperature increases, so does gross primary production. What's the y-intercept? That's the negative 1.4323. And then what does the r-squared tell us? Well, we have an r-squared value of 0.85. And what that means is that water temperature um, explains about 85% of the variation that we see in gross primary production. So that's a really good, uh, it's a really good, really strong fit. However, a word of caution, um, whenever you're building a, a statistical model, you don't ever wanna extrapolate beyond the range of X values that you use to build the model. Uh, and what I mean by that is like, if you wanted to know what gross, gross primary production was, say when water temperature is you know, 50 degrees Celsius, you wouldn't wanna use this model or it wouldn't be appropriate to use this model because we don't have, we didn't build it with any X values that were in that range. And what we don't know is that, we don't know if this relationship holds for values outside of the range that we use to build the model with. All right, so how do we know that um, the relationship that we're seeing between the um, dependent and independent variable actually exists? Um, so what we wanna know is, the, is the slope of the line actually um, something that happened by chance or is it something that um, we have uh, high confidence in? And so the way that we test this is that we, we have something that's called a p-value. A p-value indicates the probability that, you would, that we would see a slope other than zero by chance. Um, and the null hypothesis for the p-value states that the slope of a line is, is zero, that you know, y does not change as x increases, that there's no relationship. The alternative hypo hypothesis for the p-value is that the slope is some value that's not zero, that there is um, a change in our dependent variable as uh, we have a change in our independent variable. And so in ecology, we have to, we have to have, well, not just in ecology, but in statistics, we have a cutoff value for indicating when we can and cannot reject the null hypothesis. In ecology, that value, um, has just been agreed upon to be 0 0.05. And what that means um, is it, it means we have a pro we have a we have confidence that we are 95% confident that the um, relationship we're seeing is true. So to put that another way, if the p-value that we calculate is less than 0 0.05, then we can reject the null hypothesis and say that there is 95% confidence the data and analysis shows a real relationship. However, if we have a p-value greater than 0.05, then we 
uh, fail to reject the null, the null hypothesis. And we can't be certain enough that the data and analysis show a uh, true relationship. So what could cause, um, you know, uh, uncertainty in our p-value? Um, there's a couple of things. We could maybe not have the correct um, independent variable to describe our dependent variable. We could also be testing and inappropriate relationship. I mean, some um, models, some relationships aren't linear. There's many different types of relationships that can be out there. And maybe what we're testing, um, we're just using a straight line when maybe we should be using like a curved line or something like that. And so when might we want to be, you know, have greater than 95% confidence? Um, Often in, in medical studies and in drug trials, uh, companies and, and scientists want to be, you know, very sure that the drug that they're testing isn't going to, you know, have any adverse effects at the 99.9% .9 level or something, you know, even stronger than that. And in that case, you would use uh, a, that, that cutoff for uh, something being significant or not. You would you would change that from being 0.05 to point you know zero one or point zero zero one something that's you know much more strict in regards to your your confidence in the relationship that you're modeling. So when we're running regressions in Excel, we get this summary output table that provides a lot of information. A lot of useful information, but um, for what we're interested in, we're only going to focus on um, four things. So that's going to be the R squared value. That's going to be the, the slope of the uh, relationship. It's going to be the Y intercept of the relationship, as well as the P value of the slope. And so here you can see that the P value is some value much less than our cutoff value of 0 0.05, which means that the uh, relationship that we are seeing is statistically significant. We can reject the null hypothesis that there's no difference and accept the alternative that the slope of the line is something different than zero, which is just another way of saying that the relationship that we are seeing is statistically significant. So when you're presenting regression results, there's always these, you know, three or four things that that you need to um, report. That's going to be the slope and the intercept. You're always going to want to oh, you're always going to want to include the significance of the slope. That's the p-value, as well as the r squared value, which is also referred to as the coefficient of determination. So in this example below. Uh, bumblebee density increases significantly with floral diversity. Um, you get the equation for a line, you get the R squared value and the P value. So the question is, what is the slope? And what kind of relationship is this? Well, we can see from this example that the um, relationship follows this Y equals MX plus B format so that this is a linear regression. And what is the slope? Well, we know that the slope is 0.12x, which is the same as the m value, which m just stands for slope. So there's a positive slope. Um, the r squared value is 0.56. How strong is this relationship? Well, I would say that if you can explain 56% of the variation in your dependent variable, given just one independent variable, then you are um, explaining a, a lot of the variability, and I would say that's a pretty strong relationship. You have a p-value of 0 0.031, and the question is, is this relationship significant? Well, the question you have to ask yourself is, is this p-value less than or greater than your alpha value, which remember is the cutoff value, and in ecology, that value is 0 0.05. So is 0 
greater than or less than 0 0.05. It's obviously less than. So what that means is that we can reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis that yes, this is a statistically significant relationship. So we're gonna get ready to do some Excel practice with regressions. And in order to do this practice, you're gonna to need to have this data analysis tool pack installed. And um, on the left here, this is how PC users will be able to install this data analysis tool pack. And on the right, this is how um, Mac users go about installing this data analysis tool pack. So uh, give yourself a minute to pause the video and to install these data, this data analysis tool pack. And once you've done that, um, we'll get started. Uh, there's a, there'll be another video for this, but we'll get started on creating a scatter plot and, and working on a regression using this example data from page 25 of your lab manual. Um, and just to uh, look ahead, so your week four assignment on page 27 of the lab manual is you're gonna be making um, some bar charts, but you're also gonna be running uh, five linear regressions. And you're gonna wind up creating a table that looks like this. Um, you're gonna need to know you're going to need to fill in um, the slope, the y-intercept, the r-squared, and the p-value for each of these five different relationships. Um, your x variable will be, for example, here in this first relationship, will be soil moisture, and your y variable will be soil temperature. So um, that's something to consider as we are looking forward, but you know, be on the lookout for this um, next video that goes over how to run regressions in Excel.